Bibliophiles of the Internet, my name's Adriana, and today I'm here to give you five reasons to read Joseph Casada's The House of Impossible Beauties. This is Own Voice's queer Latinx historical fiction that explores the underground queer brown ball scene in 1980s New York. It's a fictional take on the conception of the infamous House of Extravaganza, the first all Latinx house. A house was made up of usually queer folks who were either trans or drag queens, representing both a found family and an organization these queens would represent when walking in balls. And of course, balls were these competitions where queens would dress up and strut their stuff in front of a panel of judges who would award trophies to the queens who slayed the most. I will say the story focuses less on the ball scene itself and more on the complex lives of the queens who fought for their respect and fought for their house's existence. Now because this story is about queer brown folks in the 80s, it does take a realistic look at the hardships they faced and the realities of their experience. So there is an exploration of rejection, abuse, rape, disownment, slurs, loss of rights, the necessity of sex work, drug use, disease transmission, the possibility of murder and suicide, both of which are actually off the page, but ultimately there is a message of hope and resistance. Reason number one to read this book is that the story doesn't shy away from what these queens had to face, and in doing so allows the reader to gain a deep sense of respect for their truth. This story properly addresses how many queens were exiled from their families, the high risk of homelessness and unemployment, the necessity of turning to sex work and the dangers of that work, rejection of every kind at every turn, the fear and misinformation spread during the AIDS crisis, it's all laid out on the page. And there's something so powerful about these queens really going through it because you see they'd rather be living in a homeless shelter, they'd rather be blowing johns down by the pier, they'd rather be getting weird looks on the street than pretend to be anything other than themselves. The story organically explores all of these difficulties through a rotating cast of characters and you can't help but respect their choice to be authentic over everything and anything else. Reason number two, it is extremely rare to see stories about trans women or effeminate queer characters, especially femme trans characters of color, and this story emphasizes the importance of that narrative. We most often see stories about trans men or trans queer characters who are more mask, and I think that's because passing as masculine affords a character more privilege, which is not to say that every trans person's goal is to be binary or to pass, because it's not. And in fact, that's not even applicable to every character in this book. But witnessing these characters who are rejecting masculinity in favor of presenting more femme or becoming female passing is, in some ways, an even more transgressive narrative. Let's put it like this, if a girl likes sports or driving trucks, she's super cool, but if a guy likes wearing dresses or makeup, he's seen as strange, and that's because we as a culture have devalued things that are coded as feminine so much. So it's not that one narrative is more powerful or more relevant or any easier, but that it is extremely transgressive to reject the privilege and safety of masculinity in favor of something else, something quote unquote less. Especially considering that this is a largely Latinx cast, and Latinx cultures are known for perpetuating and even rewarding a deep-seated sense of machismo, which literally means aggressive displays of masculine pride. So as these characters are growing up, you have people telling them what you are doing is not acceptable for a man, and anyone who does what you do is no man, which is really the ultimate slap in the face, because even if it's not what they align with, manhood is what these characters have been taught to value the most. And because because their families don't see them as quote-unquote real, that seemingly justifies the awful things their families would do or say to them to make them see sense. And still these queens would reject that and stay true to themselves, even knowing the hardships that lay ahead for a feminine queer POC. It's really important to have that representation and show these queens who were all different kinds of queer clearing their own path and finding a way for themselves. Reason number three, while the story deftly explores how difficult it is to be both queer and Latinx, it also shows that the power of community is what grants us the ability to have more love to give than hate. These queens, who again represent a wide variety of queerness, have experienced so much and have been betrayed by a society that refuses to acknowledge their existence, which has made them so sharp, so fierce, so ruthless, so fearless. And yet, with each other, they are soft and vulnerable and scared. They want to be loved, they want to be seen, and love is the only thing they have left to give. There's an incredible moment where one of the characters, Venus, is being mocked by a teenage girl who asks where she got one of her accessories. And when another character chastises Venus for being too naive and too trusting, she says, My trust is the only thing I have left. 
despite the rejection, despite the stigma, having a community that bolsters you and literally cheers you on when you are at your best and brightest, that is what gives these queens the strength to love. That is what carries them through their significantly less glamorous day-to-day -day lives. One of the biggest problems facing queer Latinidad is a sense of placelessness, of not belonging to anyone or anything. But because these queens always have a place in their house, that gives them the strength they need to love each other and to love themselves. Reason number four, it will never not be important to see queer Latinx characters who are successful, who do receive love and maintain a sense of dignity and respect. Now, what we define as success is entirely subjective, and sometimes just to survive, just to keep going, to refuse to compromise your personhood and your sense of self despite the world insisting that you do otherwise, is a manifestation of success. As I said before, even though the story starkly confronts the darkness, rejection, and uncertainty these queens faced, it is ultimately hopeful in showing that these characters have a place where they belong and who find people who give them the love they crave and deserve. Love and creation is resistance at its finest, and because this story authentically reveals both the gritty underbelly and the rich fantasy of this lifestyle and every single nuance in between, it retroactively restores a sense of respect for these queens. We often fail to recognize that this particular generation of queer brown queens changed the way we understand and navigate queer Latinidad to this day. And because you get a deep sense of who these characters truly are and the experiences that mold them, you have to respect that legacy and its impact. This story says, it will not be easy, but you do have a place. You do deserve recognition and love. And reason number five, above everything else, this story celebrates acceptance. It celebrates the people who immediately see your truth and say, yes. I love seeing these queens fight for each other. I love the way they see a fellow person in pain and decide that they are going to teach them everything they need to survive in the streets, that they are going to be the one who gives this person a chance and a place. To see these folks who have been chewed up and spit out by society, who have been forsaken by their loved ones, who only want to thrive in a world that reflects back disgust and injustice, and to see them turn around and say, I want to create a house where people like me get the chance to know love and support. That is something that renders me speechless. And I mean, that part is not fiction. That was the purpose of these balls and these houses. And no, the existence of those things does not in any way negate the adversity these queens faced, but it did allow them to be seen, which is a tremendous form of love. If you can find those pockets of acceptance, if you can find those people who choose you back and make you feel safe in an unsafe world, that's as beautiful as it gets. No matter how big or small, this story does a great job of latching onto those moments, those small mercies, those innocuous times when someone looks at you and sees you for exactly who you are and says, Yes. So those are just five reasons to read this amazing book. It's incredibly well written, it's hopeful, but it's honest and authentic. And it's just about these queens who continue to dream and to hope for more despite the fact that the world would never give them that. With all that said, if you have read this book yourself or if you would like to do so in the future, I would love to know your thoughts. But that's everything I had for this recommendation today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the flip side of the page.